Hi, I'm uh, Neil Carlin. I'm going to do a, uh, a quick oil demo here. Uh, I've got a portrait model getting ready to set up. Uh, typically in the disegno process, at least as I use it, um, after I get some black and white studies done from either the model or from photographic references, uh, if that's what's required. If I can get the model back, uh, I'll have them sit at least for a quick oil sketch so I can um, kind of uh, get a feel for their complexion, uh, get a feel for the form, uh, so I can apply it to the black and white drawing or the photograph. So here we go. Okay. The first order of business, obviously, is getting the drawing established. And since this is a short study, again, usually if I was going to do these, or uh, when I get the chance to do these, um, I've already done some type of a line drawing. So I will not um, usually, let me get that timer set for the model, I will not uh, usually transfer a drawing because when I'm doing these, they're short uh, and sweet and I just want to get a little sense of the complexion of the model that I can marry to the drawing. I'll do this a little smaller than usual because of the time constraints. Taking that neutralized orange and using that to draw with. some of the outside edges in the center line so I can see the tip turn or tilt of the head a little bit of the neck down to the pit of the neck Usually when I'm doing these, I'm not as concerned as much with the line drawing at the outset. I probably should never admit that, but there it is. Since these are just for color primarily, I leave the uh, drawing a little more open in the beginning, knowing that if I want to get a more realized uh, painting, it's just going to take me a little longer as I lay the color and I have to be a little more clear about the paint to establish a drawing as I'm putting the color down. A little bit of that. Okay. The neck as it goes into the back of the head. A little side center. The ear is behind that. We got first. If anyone watching wants to know why, what the purpose of all this action is with the arm, the sweeping action, uh, just trying to get a feel for some of these big lines. And it looks good on film. And they always have to look good in front of a camera. Get in the center line quick measurement, see where his eyes are, confirm that they're on his head. Quick measurement, drop that just a little bit. Under plane of the nose, working down from outside to in, from top to bottom. Side plane of the nose comes back and the mouth. As I said, if I were doing, certainly if the model were here for any length of time and I was doing a drawing, I'd be spending a lot more time with some of these measurements, but we'll do the best we can. 
and the time constraints are really color. Spotted in. So I'm trying to refine that outside edge just a little bit. And just looking for some key landmarks that will help get this thing underway. Looking for a level, pulling the brush up to level to see where the base of the ear is. Lines up roughly with the bottom of the mouth. Back of the neck, down, in. to at least quickly get the side plane of the face laid in. Shadow boundary comes down, cuts across the jaw, under the chin, uh, under plane, and down into the neck. A little medium. looking for these big flows as much as possible. You always have the option, it's nice working with paint with these. The option's always there to just rub it out if it really gets off track. But as I said, since these are typically a little more open, I'm not terribly concerned about nailing everything. I'll build to a finish. I used to be a lot more panicked about starting with a brush, but you do it enough and you know even if you get off track, you can get back on. It's not a big deal. Now I painted Peter before, so I at least have some feel for his face, I'd like to think. Obviously, every situation is different. Lighting is different. I'm different. The night is different. So I'll still have to sort of pay attention to what his face is doing. Comes in the shadow on the side of the eye. Let me hot cap it in just a little bit more. And like I said, at some point, I start to get a little impatient with these. Since this is not a formal portrait, I'm just going to get going pretty soon. Let's take a brush, a quick measurement. Yeah, that's pretty good. Took a, took a took a second to look at the width to height to make sure I'm in the ballpark. I think definitely this is more of a, uh, a pushing oval pushing ellipse with the hair mass on top. But I think some of these areas I'm going to feel a little better about once I get into paint. Hair comes up the side, comes down. And I think 
Let's say the urine has to be a little larger. Let's see. I've always found that making the features a little bigger than what I need at the outset, I can always cut into them. Certainly better than giving people beady rat eyes and pinched noses. I think one of my teachers, Martha Erlbacher, advocated that. Just make them a little bigger. You can always cut back in. Okay. And then once I got something down, it gives me some kind of a boundary. So I'll look right there. My shoulder's got to come off a little bit more. There it goes down. Shadows laid in. Let's see. That should be right beneath the chin. Just a little bit higher. Okay. At this point, I'm just going to say time is the enemy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to thin that, <coughs> pardon me, thin that shadow color and just start filling. Again, I used to lay out the entire palette for the first sitting and I just it became way too I'm inefficient uh, for this first sitting and again when I, if I'm doing these for the purposes of uh, some kind of a color note almost like a large color note for a drawing then I don't really need as many values in the shadow I'm really looking to get the form and the color and the light made more sense to start to restrict the palette and of course historically anyone who's done any reading I mean it's to limit the palette at the beginning is certainly a time-tested approach kind of build the palette once the drawing and some of the basic values are secured I think it was Dali and what 50 secrets of magic craftsmanship I believe if I remember correctly started with Blue, black, Venetian, red, uh, Naples, yellow, and white, and then worked from up, or worked up from there to a more complicated, comprehensive palette. Okay. And yes, for those who are watching and thinking, boy, doesn't he ever change his brush? I really like round brushes. I always have. I like to hatch with the paint once I get some paint down. I might switch to a filbert once in a while for the background, but the scale of this, I'll just stick with a round. I might hit the filbert for the background when I get to that point. Put this right up on through. But I like to, uh, I more or less like to hatch with the paint. I keep thinking these days, I don't know if I consider myself as much of a painter as someone who just likes to draw with a brush in his hand. I know in a large sense painting is just drawing with color, but like I said, I like to hatch the same way I do with a pen or pencil with my brush. So that way I can work across the form, laying the strokes down, following the topography, rather than just throwing a bunch of paint down and kind of mushing it together. Not that there's anything wrong with that. All right. Get a little more of the shadow. Still had some time with the model. Okay. At this point, um, clearly I've masked the shadows in all at one value, uh, which sort of always trying to unify if possible. Uh, clearly I'm dealing with different locals. The hair is a different local than the jacket, but I'm going to stick at least this point with a basic average shadow mass so I can just see the light and shade get some of those shapes in 